we will now talk about vector clocks. As we have seen, the happen before relation is a partial order. So in contrast, Lamport logical clocks are total. This means that information about non-causality is lost. What that means is that we cannot tell by looking to the timestamp of events A and B whether there are causal relation between the events or if they are concurrent. Vector clocks can distinguish between causally related events and concurrent events. A vector clock guarantees that if the vector of event A is less than the vector of event B, then also event A happens before event B. This is in addition to what Lamport clocks gave us, which gave us if A happens before B, then also vector clock A is less than vector clock B. So let us look a little bit to then the notion of non-causality and concurrent events. Two events A and B are concurrent, and we write them like this. A and B are concurrent then execution A with a trace beta. If it is the case that A is not before B in beta and B is not before A in beta. So in a sense, they are not comparable by the happen before relation. We need to remember that the happen before relation is a partial order. So some events are not comparable. The computation theorem that we discussed before implies that if two events are parallel in a trace beta, there are two executions with two traces, beta 1 and beta 2, that are similar, and by similar means that no process in the system can distinguish between them. So there are two traces or two executions where in one execution A occurs before B, that is the execution with trace beta 1, and in the other execution B occurs before A in beta 2. So let us see this and let us look again to concurrent events and let us compare events A and events B. So here is execution, I would call this execution beta 1, and this is I will call beta 2. And you can see these two executions are similar. But here in the first execution, event A occurs after event B. Whereas in the second execution, as you can see here, event A occurs before event B. And notice that causality is respected in both executions. So each process sees exactly the same thing, the same events or the same sequence of events. So what we are going to define now is the notion of a vector clock. So let's see what is a vector clock first. So a vector clock of an event A, written this way, is a vector of n elements. And what are the elements? The elements corresponds to the number of events occurring on each process. So this x1 will be events happening at process p1, and xn will be events happening at process xn. So again, so xi is the number of events at pi, and these are the number of events that happens before our event A. So the number of events that happen before our event A. Which would mean, for each such event, such event happens before A. Let us observe this here in the diagram. So here is our event A. And at this point, let us look at this point. Let us see what is the vector clock of event A. We can write it here. So x1 will be the number of events 
that happens before A on P1. And this is 1, 2, and 3. And A itself occurs in P2, and the number of events that happens before A on P2 is 0. And what about events that happens on P3 that are causally related? None of the events here are causally related because P3 did not yet communicate with P2. So it's also zero. So that is what a vector clock for an event. So now let us look to the algorithm for implementing a vector clock. We have n processes, P1 to Pn. And each process Pi has a local vector of size n, the number of processes. And initially, all the elements in the vector are initialized to zero. And whenever a message is sent, we attach the current value of the vector to the message. So we say that we piggyback V on every sent message. And now we do that for each transition. We do the following. For each transition, means on each event, we update the local vector P at PI as follows. First, we update the element corresponding to PI by incrementing it by one. This is done whether is the event is internal, a send event, or a delivery event. And moreover, if we have a delivery event, so we have a message that has arrived with a vector. So, and the vector in this case is the value of the vector at a process called VQ. So we compare element-wise each element of our current vector at PI with the vector that has been sent element-wise and we pick the max value out of this. And we update the corresponding field VI accordingly. Let us now try to compare vector clocks. And here is a way to compare vector clocks. Some vectors will be comparable. It means one is either equal to the other, less than or greater than. But some of the vectors will be non-comparable. We say that a vector VP is less or equal to another vector VQ if element-wise every element in VP is less or equal every corresponding element in VQ. So, for example, the vector 3, 0, 0 is less or equal to the vector 3, 1, 0. This element is equal to this element. This is less than that element, and these are equal. So that's fine. Then we say that a vector VP is strictly less than VQ if the relation we just mentioned holds, but also for some elements, if for some element I at both vectors, that element at P is strictly less than the corresponding element at Q. We can see this here. We have just shown, seen, seen that here is this element is strictly less than this. So therefore, the same vector again is strictly less than that vector. We say that two vectors are concurrent, written this way. If it is the case that VP is not less than VQ, and VQ is not less than VP. If we take this vector, 3, 1, and 0, and let us say this will not be comparable to the following vector, 4, 0, and 0, let us say. Because first of all, this element here is less than this element there. But on the other hand, this element here is greater than this element here. This is greater. Therefore, these two vectors are concurrent and they are incomparable. Vector clocks will guarantee that if one vector is less than the other for events A and B respectively, then A happens before B. 
This is, of course, in addition that what uh, logical clocks guarantees. So now let us see an example of vector timestamps and see how things execute according to the algorithm. So initially, we have all vectors for the three processes P1, P2, P3 are initially zero. Then we have P1 performed a step and this step is an internal event. So we increment the field corresponding to, to P1 by one. Then P1 does another event, so that field now is incremented again, so it has the value two. And then P1 does another event, so now we have the vector three, zero, zero. Now, this event, this event, is a send event of a message. So what do we have here? We have this event arriving here. We'll come back to it now soon. But let us first perform the next event, and this is event here. And from this P3 point of view, it just increments its own field in the vector. So this field is incremented. Now we come to this event. What the algorithm does is that initially it had this vector so it will first increment its own field so it's 0 1 0 and then it will compare this with the vector sent on the message and what is the vector sent on the message this is the vector 3 0 0 it will compare element wise and take the max so the max of 3 and 0 is 3 and the max of 0 and 1 is 1 and then 0 so we know. If we now continue with the next event, that's an event happening at P1, the field corresponding to the first process is incremented by one, and so on. So consider the following execution, and let us look to these two vectors and two events A and B. What the vector clock algorithm guarantees is that if vector A is less than vector B, then A happens before B. So the vector of B, as you can see here, is larger than the vector of A, which means that event B, which is at P3, has seen all events on each process that event A has seen and also have seen more events for some processes. This implies that A happens before B. Okay. So this event have seen all events that this guy have seen, that, that A have seen, and have seen even a little bit more events. So this implies that A is before B in the causality chain. And that one means A is before B, or happens before B. Now let us look to events which are incomparable. So the now we are talking about two vectors which are incomparable here. And we want to see that this imply that A and B are concurrent. Observe that. If A and B are concurrent and A is at P1 here and B is at P3 here, then at P1 there are some events P3 did not observe. So basically you can see that this value, what is this value? The value of V A, the first element of V A, is actually greater than the first element at V P. So there is some events that's happening at P1 that is not observed at P3, and vice versa. So at P3, if we look to this element of the vector, there is some events at P3 
that are not observed at P1. If you look to VP and look to the third element, we see that this is greater than VA, the corresponding element, which is the third element. This ends the presentation on vector timestamps or vector clocks. One result that you should be aware of is that we cannot have vectors with smaller vector size than n in general. There are some executions that require that the vector size is equal to n. Let us now discuss the issue of partial and total order and look to the relations that we have just studied. We happen before relation. This is a partial order because you cannot order concurrent events. The Lamport clock or logical clock, these are total orders because any two distinct clock values are ordered, especially if you add the PID in guarantee that they are really ordered. And you have then the vector timestamp. The vector timestamp is a partial order because some vectors are incomparable and those are the ones that capture concurrent events. In summary, logical clocks has the following property. If an event A is before an event B or happens before event A, then we can guarantee that the Lamport timestamp of the first event is less than the Lamport timestamp of the second event. Vector clocks guarantee this property too, the same property here, but also guarantees that if one vector, the vector of A is less than the vector of B, then the event A happens before event B, and this implies that if the two vectors are incomparable, then these two events will be concurrent events. You can discuss in the discussion group which one of these two properties are more useful and why, and also what extra information vector clocks give us.